What do you tell the divers in a dive briefing? Well, if you're a dive master or an instructor, or you find that you commonly have other divers following you, then this just might be exactly what you need. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Dive Vibe. If you're new here, thanks for coming. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Okay, so we're here to talk about dive briefings. If you've taken a dive master course or you're an instructor, then more than likely someone has taught you how to do a dive briefing. But I am willing to bet that it probably just got glanced over and there wasn't too much attention paid to it. But dive briefings can save you a lot of time and headache. Now, I am a technical rebreather instructor, but I do also do and have done a lot of guiding over the years. A lot of dive guiding out here in Hawaii, and I can tell you that the battle is sometimes won and lost on the boat before you even hit the water. If you don't do a proper dive briefing, it could lead to substantial difficulties underwater. It's okay! Stop! Oh my God. And a lot of these problems could be fixed on the boat before you even hit the water. Let's talk about dive briefings. Let's talk about how to give a good one. So the majority of dive operators out there are patty shops. So I'm gonna just go through the 10 key points that they say you need to hit in a patty dive briefing. And then we're gonna talk about those in just a little bit more detail. You wanna start it off with an introduction. Let them know who you are, what boat they're with, and all that good stuff. Because if they get lost, they're really gonna to wanna to know what the name of the shop and what the name of their boat was. You'd be surprised how often people don't know that. Okay, so introductions out of the way. Now we're gonna start talking about the 10 items to hit. First, you got the site name and site description, your role in the dive, the entry and exit, dive procedures and emergency procedures, hand signal review or signal review, roster and buddy check slash assigning dive buddies, environmental orientation, and pre-dive safety check. Now, there's one thing in that list that I think is omitted. I think it's very important for any dive guide to be including in their briefing, and it's my special 11th bonus step and that is going to be at the end of the video so stay tuned to catch that <laughs> all right so let's break it down step by step so first things first i said you want to introduce yourself that's really important they should know what your name is it makes them feel safer it makes you more friendly it just makes everything better after that it's time to start talking about the dive site and you start that off with the name welcome to coral gardens something cool like that, make it snazzy. Next, you're gonna to wanna to get into the description, and this is where you can put as much into it or as little into it as you want to. You could draw a map, you could have pictures, you could use, if your dive shop has items for you to use, then you can use those to make your briefing a little bit more better. Um, if you make your own stuff, that's even better. I know a lot of guides that'll bring an iPad with them or a flip book of pictures, probably an iPad these days. But you're also gonna wanna include things like the max depth that you're gonna hit, the average depth that you're probably gonna hit, like what you're gonna be at for most of the dive. You wanna let them know the route, which way you're gonna go, and what the conditions look like for that day. For example, we've got a dive site here called Suck 'em Up. Suck 'em Up is a lava tube where you can swim through it, and at the end of it, there is a small exit. And it gets that name Suck 'em Up because a lot of times you'll have divers that are leaving the tube, and if the waves are big that day and they don't time it right, they can get sucked back in. The suck zone. It really creates a great expression on their face. <laughs> So obviously, you'd warn them not to go into the lava tube on days where the surf is real big. Next, you want to let them know your role in the dive. Where are you going to be? Are you going to be in front of them, leading them? Are you going to be in the water but watching them from behind? Or is this the type of dive boat where the divers go into the water unsupervised and you just check them in as they come back to the boat? Blech. Sending divers down underwater unsupervised literally terrifies me. <laughs> Why? Because I'm a diver and I know about the stupid stuff that I do. All right, the next one can be very important or it can be not really that big of a deal. Entry and exit. If you work on a dive boat where the entry is giant stride and the exit is climbing up a big, nice, easy ladder, then there's not a whole lot you have to tell them other than when you come up to the ladder, make sure you stay clear of anybody climbing and make sure that you take your fins off and hand them up to the crew as you climb. Or if you don't like to take people's fins from them, then maybe they put them on their wrists 
whatever, whatever, however you do it. But just make sure that you highlight all the parts of the entry and exit that could potentially hurt them. That's the most important thing. Next thing you talk about is dive procedures, how things are gonna go and stuff like that. If you didn't talk about drift diving procedures in your entry and exit portion, then now would be a great time to cover it. Next on the list is emergency procedures. This can be a really important one and some of the things in this list are definitely need to know stuff for divers, but sometimes they forget it, so you wanna remind them. This would include things like diver recall, buddy separation, how to handle an out of air diver, any local protocols that may be different from what they're used to, and where you keep your oxygen and first aid kits on the boat, and an AED if you have one. Next up is the signal review. Notice I don't say hand signal review because there's other types of signals that you may need to address with them. Like for example, all of our guides carry around a noisemaker and it's typically something that we can bang on our tank with because we've just found that that just tends to be louder and more audible to everybody uh, in your dive group. It's worked out really well for us, so that's what we do. Also, we can change the sound depending on what's going on. For example, at Jack's Diving Locker, and don't copy this, we play a shave and a haircut two bits whenever we've got something really really big coming by. So, dun, 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 dun. If you've ever heard that underwater in Kona, Hawaii, you uh, heard an excited Jack's Diving Locker guide. <laughs> but you can also remind them of any hand signals you might have for certain fish, like a shark, or a big shark, or a really big shark. Manta ray, monk seal. <laughs> After that, it's time to go over the roster and do a buddy check. So, for this one, you want to make sure that everybody in your dive group is there. and. To be honest, if they're already on your boat, there's a good chance that a roll call has already been made. But it's still important to match up all the names with the faces and the names on the list and all that good stuff. It's also important to make sure that your divers know who they're with. You know, obviously they're gonna be diving with you, but who's their buddy? Once that's covered, it's time for the environmental orientation. And at this point, you just wanna give them any dangers of the dive site, like dangerous marine life or a potentially painful marine life, like sea urchins or something like that. Uh, also, you could orient them to anything like we have a dive site here in Hawaii where there's an active boat channel right near it, so we always make sure that our divers know that it'd be a bad idea to swim in there and ascend. <laughs> Once you've got that covered, then you're almost done because it's time for the pre-dive safety check. So you want to make sure that your divers are actually doing their BWRAF and that you're reminding them of whatever clever acronym you've chosen to use. My personal favorite being Breathing water really ain't fun. Tends to stick with people a little bit better. But you could also use burger with relish and fries, begin with review and friend, big whales really are fun, banana walruses rarely aren't friendly, being wiggled rarely alerts fondue. Which leads me to my special bonus briefing point. And I don't think that this gets covered enough, but if you've got divers that are using your rental gear, then it's a really good idea to orient them to that. So explain how the gear works, especially if it's got something they may not be used to. Maybe your divers are used to diving with their alternate air source on a yellow 36 inch hose. And maybe on your boat, your alternate air sources are built into the inflator. So you're actually going to donate your primary to an out of air diver and switch to the inflator. Now, Hopefully, that's not gonna happen at all on your dive boat, but that's why we train for these things. We need to make sure that the divers are ready in the event of an emergency, and that does fall under your responsibility, at least to some extent. They are certified, but you're in charge. You're the professional. Other things to include would be the location of the OPVs on the BCD, anything special about how the regulator operates, maybe the controls or venturi lever or something like that. If they've got dive computers, you're gonna to wanna to let them, give them a quick briefing on how the dive computer works. You know, it's a, there's a fine line between diving for them and making sure that they've noticed all the things that they need to notice or they know all the stuff that they need to know. But I would personally rather give too much information than not enough information. And I don't feel like there's too much of an argument to be made to the contrary, unless you're worried about boring people to death, which can be a thing, and that's why if you're diving with the same diver or divers over multiple days, it's a good idea to trim the briefing back down. You don't tell them things over and over again unless you need to remind them something because they did something you asked them not to do in a previous dive. But definitely don't repeat the whole briefing over again to people that have already heard it. Sometimes it can be nice to just do the part that they need to hear and then let those divers go and then brief the ones that haven't heard your full briefing yet if you've got a mixed group. Well, hopefully that helps you out. I remember when I first started guiding divers, the briefing was something I, I, I kind of didn't want to do. I felt apprehensive about it. I felt nervous. But once you get into it, it's really, it's really not all that bad. Just remember you're guiding the dive. 
you're in charge. Well, if you enjoyed that or you learned something, do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe to feed the algorithm. And if you'd like to support the channel, check out the links to Patreon and Bonfire in the description. You can get a shirt or you can buy me a beer, which is great. And do leave a comment if you've got any questions because I love talking to you guys. I love reading the comments. I try to read as many as I can, if not all of them. Thanks so much for diving with me today and I'll see you in the water. Hey. Hey.